In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent, and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they, among, why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, he reconciled, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time, I heard you, and on the day of salvation, I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew glory to you O Lord Jesus said to his disciples take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them otherwise you will have no recompense from your Heavenly Father when you give alms do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others amen I say to you they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners, so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you. They have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance, so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received the reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you may not appear to be fasting. Accept your Father who is hidden, and your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I'll be glad when we don't have to wear these masks anymore. <clears throat> so see if any of this sounds familiar. You get pulled over for speeding and the officer gives you a ticket. If only you'd slow down. You fail a test because you decided to go out with friends rather than study. If only you'd stayed in. You had way too much to drink and it takes you three days to recover. If you'd only stopped at a couple. If you break your wrist skateboarding down a steep hill and wind up missing half the basketball season. If only you'd waited until the season was over. You say some hurtful things to a girlfriend or a boyfriend and they break up with you. If only you'd been kinder. You get caught taking a few office items from work and are fired immediately. If only you thought of what you might lose. You hold a grudge against a family member not talking to them for a very long time only to hear the sad news that they died suddenly and you never took the time to reconcile. If only you'd reached out earlier. If only I could go back and do it over. We say that about so many things, don't we? If only I could go back and do it over. Yet we know that for many things, that's just not possible. 
The poor choices we make in life often have negative consequences that we simply can't undo. We just can't turn back the clock and do things differently so that we can get a better result. We'd like to, but it's simply not possible. Or is it? Today we gather in faith to celebrate the beginning of something, the holy season of Lent. Yes, this beginning that we celebrate each and every year can also be a kind of ending. The end of whatever it is that is keeping us from being the people of God, the people that God created us to be. And unlike so many other things in our lives, this is one area in which God gives us a kind of do-over, a chance to be someone we might not have been before, kinder, more forgiving, more merciful, more generous, more loving, more of whatever good thing that you can think of. In a certain sense, Lent is a kind of spiritual reset, a chance to start over, a chance to let God create each one of us anew. It's as, it's as if God is saying, let's try this again. I know you can do better. I want you to do better. The world needs you to do better. What a great God we have. He gives us as many chances as we need. What an incredible gift that is. And while God's mercy and forgiveness arise from the pure graciousness of God, they do require a couple of things from us in order to truly change us on the inside, change us for the better. And those two things are honesty and hope. We need to be honest with ourselves about the things in us that need to change in our lives. Honest about our motives, honest about our failings, honest about our own sin. Lent is an ideal time to look deep within <coughs> and take an honest assessment of our hearts and our minds and actions. And the Sacrament of Reconciliation is the perfect opportunity to do precisely that. To bring into the light some of the ugliness, some of the shame, some of the selfishness. By naming and admitting our sin, we allow the grace of the sacrament to render it powerless. It's not easy to do. It's really easier to simply not think about it. But when we do that, when we ignore the truth about ourselves, our sin still keeps us bound. And not much changes. Honesty about ourselves, an essential element to a life of faith. And we also need to be hopeful, hopeful in the promises of Christ, hopeful that we can truly be better than we were yesterday, hopeful that God wants nothing more than to forgive us, hopeful that if we are open to him, God will pour his grace and mercy into our hearts, into our souls into our very lives, transforming us into people of great love. My friends in Christ, you wouldn't be here today if you didn't believe in the power of God. So let's open ourselves up to him this holy season, allowing him to give us the do-over that we all so desperately need. And while we can't undo the past, we can allow God to change us from within, rendering our faults and our failings and regrets and sin a distant memory. May you all have a holy and blessed night. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. O God, who are moved by acts of humility, who respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers, and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who are marked with these ashes, that 
as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, through Christ our Lord. At this time, those who wish are invited to come forward in turn. This year, as the instructions from Rome have told us, we'll be silently sprinkling a little bit of ash on top of your head. If you come to my line, you might need to bend a little so I can reach you. If you come to Deacon David's line, probably not so much. And when you get back to your place, I invite you to be seated until all are done. Give us a moment to wash our hands. And when we return, we'll pray the prayers of the faithful together. Repent and believe in the gospel. Renewed in our desire to grow close to God, let's now name a few of our needs in prayer. That we may return to the Lord with all our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this Lent will make us more faithful and fruitful for the kingdom of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the poor may reap a share of the benefits of our sacrifice during this holy season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our catechumens and all who prepare for the Easter sacraments may grow in joy as they draw near to this altar, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and those who take care of them may find comfort, strength, and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, they may rejoice forever at the banquet table of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for what or for who or for whom for what or for whom shall we pray? Lord, hear our prayer. For the soul of my father who passed away this weekend, and for comfort for my mother, pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing for our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Kind and compassionate God, we Praise and thank you for the gifts of your love. We ask you to deepen and renew them within us and draw us close to the heart of your Son, Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, please pray that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins, may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Savio, and Daniel, our bishops. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among these saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles, and all these saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation. We shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the King, power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pour out a spirit of compunction, O God, on those who bow before your majesty. And by your mercy, may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Master Zinder, let us go forth to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. We do have one announcement before you go. Good morning. We are here today to announce our school's 2021 Rice Bowl campaign for Catholic Relief Services. Later today, we will be putting a little rice bowl and a poster in each teacher's mailbox. They will bring those items to your classrooms so we can get our Lenten campaign going. We are asking all of you to bring in coins and even paper money if you can to fill our rice bowls. The money we, will, we donate will help the poor in more than 100 countries around the world and here in the U.S. Each year, we are amazed to see how our coins and bills add up during the weeks of Lent. Here are some important things that Rice Bowl money can help CRS volunteers do what they do for those in need. They can teach people better farming methods so that they can grow more crops to feed their families and sell at market, give people small loans, often under $20, so that they can start business and support themselves, help mothers and children with health care and better nutrition, help schools have the things they need, and give emergency relief in times of disaster. We know that Jesus wants us to take care of people in need just so that we were caring for him. We would like to thank you in advance for donating to the CRS Rice Bowl and help to carry on Jesus' work in our world. Have a blessed day. This Mass is being recorded and will be viewed by every student in our school. And they were talking mostly to the camera, but you all can do Rice Bowl too. <laughs> 